Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, happy Monday to you all. Hopefully, you enjoyed your weekends. The weather is oddly warm today. And that must mean one thing. We have an album. Nah, no, it's completely unrelated. But regardless, we have an album to get to because Zero Base One have made their first ever comeback following their debut in Bloom earlier on in the year. We checked out the title track back then. We checked out the album back then. We've checked out the title track Chase today. And now we've got the B-sides to get around to. This is the Melting Point EP. And I am tremendously excited for it. Um, a couple of points, if you haven't watched the, uh, or if you haven't watched me watch along or listen along to the title track of this era yet, the improvement is spectacular. And the fact that they've continued with that kind of trancey, fast-paced synthy sound, I'm so on board for. But we have B-sides to get around to, and sometimes these albums, while the title track can be good, the B-sides can be better. And I'm very excited to check it out also. To kind of learn who's who, because we have color-coded lyric videos, uh, ones that I don't know if they're accurate or not, so apologies for any inaccuracies they may have in advance. But I need to learn, I need to learn who these members are, because I can't put names to faces quite yet. Some of them I can, some of them I have no idea where to begin, and that's kind of the case for a lot of the debuting boy groups of this year, I just haven't really delved into any of them properly yet, and... I mentioned this, and I, or I explained this when they debuted early on in the year. I didn't watch Boys Planet, so I have no connection with these guys whatsoever. So, you know, every, I'm going to take every era as a learning experience, and one day I hope I will get there in the end. But that's enough waffling from me. Let's get started. DJ, roll the intro. Right all. If you have never been around here for one of my album listens before, or if you're around here, what we do here is we're going to run through every single song on the album minus the title track, because of course we have spent time on that already. That is in, or that's going to be on the channel somewhere. It's, it went out earlier today, so it shouldn't be too far away from this one. Um, I'm going to read through the song credits uh, for every single song, and then um, just kind of go from there. So. Let me, oh shoot, okay. Um, usually I would go off of the um, Reddit. So like the r slash Kpop subreddit usually has these um, album discussion posts up. But most of the producers' names are still in Korean. They haven't gotten the translations for. I'm gonna pull up Genius real quick on my phone and go from there, so give me two seconds. All right, here we go. We have the Genius list which is very helpful for me. And unfortunately on Genius, they don't separate who does what. So like they don't say who did composition, who did lyrics and things like that. So I'm just going to read them straight through and we'll go from there. So this is track number one on the album. This is Melting Point, written by Cho Yoon Kyung, Arine, Arine, uh, Mr. Cho Yi Jin, uh, 12 hours, 51 minutes, and Sunflower. So here we go. Again, I don't, I can't attest to the accuracy of these videos, but we're just gonna send it and hope they're accurate. Oh, Jewel's got such an interesting height range. I was not expecting to take it into halftime here. Back into the double time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
What an interesting chorus. Mix around with the meter a little bit, go a little bit crazy on the vocal range. Oh, Zhang Hao floating on it one time. Also, Ricky's got a nice high tone as well. Wish it was mic'd a little bit or like mixed in a little bit more forward in the mix, but Ricky's got a nice high tone. There's a very subtle vocal harmony thing going on here. I don't know who's on the lower parts or in the background parts, but... Tere, go off one time. My high note quota has been fulfilled for this song. Thank you, Humden. Yo, they've got some vocal vocals. I feel like Melting Point already were off to a great start in terms of the vocals, W vocals, because their vocals only take Ws. Like, the kind of vocal masterclass on display here is very nice. Like, Melting Point is not a low song by any means of the imagination. In fact, most of the killing points are pretty high. They're not like stupid high falsetto ranges, but they're up there in that chest voice where it can make certain vocalists a little bit uncomfortable with how high it is because it sits right in that in-between zone between their low falsetto and their high chest voice. No, they own that. Um, stand, like, there's certain vocalists who have like, oh, I didn't know you had that in you. Like, Ricky's got a really nice high tone, although I wish it, he was mixed a little bit more forward. I think, just to get the background out of the way, I think uh, there was a chorus in there where it was like, was it Gunwook and Zhang Hao uh, going 1-2 in certain places? I think that was a nice combo. Hanbin's high note at the end of the bridge, exquisite. Of course, like, going Tere into Hanbin with the really smooth bridge I think was such a clutch choice to make. And yeah, I do like when a song kind of starts with, I'm glad they didn't go with just like a one minute intro and then like title track. We got like a proper opening into this album and I think that was great. All right, let's see what we got next. This is Take My Hand. If I got the order correct, this is track number two on the album. Oh my goodness, there's a lot. Okay. Um, Written by Chrismatic, Danke La Studio, I'm assuming uh, they're on lyrics. Uh, Gusten Dolkvist, Erne Valdel Preit, Kangen Yu, Dr. Han, Mu Yo Rung, So Yong Jun, Im Su Ho, uh, Kim Yerim of Banana Fondue, Na Sim, Kim Su Min, Cool Kid, 12 hour, 51 minutes of Very Goods, and Sunflower. Okay, so some familiar names and faces in here. All right, here we go. Oh, that is not the meter I would have thought would come out of that. Yeah, we really are just getting served a vocal masterclass this album so far. Straight 
straight into the release. Not the biggest release I thought we were gonna get, but subtle background vocal harmony again. And then straight into the second verse. Man, this song is, it's cruising. Interesting to have Gubin's little like rap interjection be more like spoken poetry rather than a proper rap. And then he follows it up with the smooth vocals. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. This song is insanely fast paced. Like, it does not give you any second to breathe during, like, between the different phrases. It just keeps going. This is such an interesting song from like a pairing point of view because the instrumental track is so fast, it's so high intensity and yet the vocal part is actually quite slow. Like you don't get a really ridiculous fast syllable count. And there's my high note quota, hell yeah. Yeah, it's like the vocal part almost keeps the instrumental part in check and like keeps it from running off into the distance. Very interesting. Also, that staggered synth is a really interesting touch. But yeah, take my hand. It's almost like the title is a bit of like a metaphor into how the song is being written. It's like the instrumental part is like a runaway train or a runaway object and the members are saying take my hand don't run off without us in a way and i think that's really interesting the song is yeah the song it might be jeez that's three and a half minutes it's three and a half minutes it felt like two and a half minutes just from how fast it was going because there's sometimes you come across a song that is very quick that's perfectly fine you know i quite like a quick song sometimes but this is a song where it was quick, and it's like, if you miss the first couple of beats, you weren't going to catch up to it, because it was just going to storm off into the distance ahead of you. That's honestly hard to do, I feel like. At least, just based off of the other songs that we've come across this year, there have been a handful of songs that have fallen in that category of the instrumental track just goes, and there's really nothing stopping it. It really is unstoppable object and it's it's not going to come across an immovable object it's just going to continue to run off and yeah there really is just no place to breathe in this it's like you breathe you're behind now good luck that's crazy all right track number four on the album um of course typically crush would come right after Take My Hand, but since we've already done a video on it, we're going to skip ahead. Track number four, Kid Zone, spelled K-I-D-Z Zone. Written by Alex Hope, Yisuran, Luke Nicoli, Alex Bilowitz, Marianovsky, Yisholbi. Might recognize only a couple of people on this. Alright, here we go. Snappy.
Hello Choir section. Oh my god, they're having Eugene sit way up there. We got a break. Interesting textural thing going on here. A little acoustic guitar edition. Liven it up a little. Take it down and just electric guitar. This chorus is, I mean, that main vocal line for the chorus is not, is again, sitting in that weird high chest voice, low falsetto point. And they're doing a good job of like making it have a lot of body behind it. Nice little break. Yeah, that song. Oh, no wonder that song felt so short because it was. It's essentially two and a half minutes long. <gasps> Another song fallen victim to the streaming meta. Oh, no. Um, Kid Zone is quite interesting because on first listen, it is, I think, my favorite B-side of the album so far, even though it does feel the most mainstream out of the, out of the songs on the album so far. Like, it's got that kind of youthful pop rock vibe to it. It's got the bubbliness of a youthful pop rock song. It's not, a, like, a challenging song to listen to. There really isn't a whole lot, like, that's out of the box with it. It's very much the most run-of-the-mill song, I think, on this album so far. But for me, it isn't about the kind of normalcy. It's the fact that, like, vocally, this song is deceptively difficult, I think. And yet, I didn't feel that difficulty hearing them sing it. And that's what's really interesting for me. So, like, when you listen through the choruses, those of you who have a little bit of vocal background will know, if you listen real closely to a vocalist, especially a male vocalist, then you can hear when they flip down from their head voice into, like, their chest voice. And for pretty much... Everyone responsible for any part of the chorus, you can hear him like flutter back and forth between that little head voice, chest voice range. And this song really does not like hold back on that front where they really have all the vocalists sit in that weird, awkward range. And honestly, I didn't really feel any of that awkwardness. And that's pretty impressive on its own right. Of course, we get the big vocal chord to start off the choruses as well, which is a great touch. I love that. I do wonder what made the produ production team decide to write the song specifically in this range that would have all the vocalists hit that weird kind of in-between range for them. Because it wasn't like a one in, or like a one or two person thing. It's Pretty much everyone who sang the chorus was in that like chest voice, head voice in between range. And no, I feel like, I mean, it's definitely an easier song if it wasn't. And if they're flexing the vocal talents by giving them a song that's a little bit more difficult, then I'd say job well done because they made a difficult song to sing sound not very difficult. And that's pretty impressive. All right. I've also learned that my mouse works today, which is great. But final song. This is Good Night, written by Cho Yun Kyung, Julie Yu, Yi Yi Jin, Im Su Ho, Nico, alias Olberg, and 
Sunflower, some familiar names on here. Final song on a pop album could be a ballad. Let's find out. It's pretty quick. Jung Ho in his low range is really nice. Actually, everyone's range, everyone's voice is so far in this low range is really nice. Oh, get floaty with that, Ricky. Hello, string section. This is actually a very good song. This might take piece on the album for me. I'll explain in a minute, but. As much as I like a nice high vocal, if they can do justice to a nice rich mid-range vocal like they are doing with this, I'm so on board with it. And being a violin player myself, I love when a song throws in the string section like this. Get a little spicy with the chords one time. I hear you up there, whoever you are. A little popify ballad lullaby to finish. Oh, I'm so on board with it. Oh, yeah, genuinely, Good Night, I think, is gonna take B side of the album for me. And it's, there's a couple things that go into it. One, it's got a lot of things that I like about a pop song in it. It's got the kind of emotional aspect of a ballad, it's got the sensitiveness of a ballad but it's also got the playfulness of a gentle pop song. It's got the string section. I love a string section. I'm very biased towards one, having played violin for God knows how many years at this point. Um, I haven't played recently, but I started playing in fourth grade, played all the way through third year of undergrad. I'm 26 now, if that dates me in any way, shape, and form, but it's got a really nice vocal range. And for me, this entire album has been a bit of a vocal showcase for them, which I think is really cool. Like, throughout the five songs, you know, title track included, we, there really were not a lot of rap sections in this album. Having said that, I think Good Night, for me, was the best showcase of the members' vocals all around, because unlike songs like, say, Kids Zone, where it's very much them sitting up there in the vocal register. It's them being a little bit more comfortable in their fuller, lower tone. And I feel like that lower tone was something that kind of got overlooked on certain parts of this album. And as someone who is kind of, you know, properly trying to learn through what each member sounds like in their various ranges like that, Good Night, I think, was a really nice showcase 
of them really utilizing a wider vocal range that the other songs didn't really allow for as well. So, like, I pointed them out earlier, but, like, Ricky getting quite a bit more comfortably floaty at the end of the pre-courses. Zhang Hao really sitting in that nice, rich, low tone. Sure, I mean, we got some of the higher tones from, like, Yujin and Tede in, throughout the song. But to be able to hear their full, rich tone without them kind of being forced to use that head voice of theirs is a very nice, refreshing way to end the album. And, of course, I'm a sucker for a ballad. I love an emotional ballad. I think it's a very cathartic experience. Good Night, while it is not a ballad ballad by any means, it has all the traits that I want from a ballad in it. It's got the smoothness. It's got the delicacy of it. It's got the twinkle to it. It's got the emotional value of it. And overall, it's got the beauty that I want from a ballad. Packaged up in a quite, in a quite nice, like, popified, like, um, lullaby. And I think that's great. I feel like I'm going to sound like a broken record at this point, but I kind of have the exact same comments I made about the title track about the album. Their improvement is uh, very noticeable. Um, I do have some questions about the album. Not in like the musical sense, but in the production and composition side of things, like why certain things ended up this way. Um, but overall, I don't mind the sound of the album altogether. It's as someone who is, you know, more vocally oriented and that they prefer more vocal parts and things like that. This album is pretty much built for me, isn't it? Because it's 95% vocals. Like, so much to the point where I don't actually know who classifies as the main rappers in the group. That's because I feel like we really didn't get enough of them, in a way. If that makes sense. Like, if I had to... If I had to guess, I'd probably say Guvin is one of the main rappers just because he got the most like talk rapping rapping like narration parts throughout but apart from that i really don't have a solid lead on who could be like lead rapper afterwards which is very interesting because usually that line is pretty clear when it comes to pop groups especially groups of this size um i've also noticed that this is actually quite a difficult group to try and learn because a lot of them, for me, sound quite similar. Like, a lot of them do quite sound similar to each other. And I didn't expect that. I thought, because admittedly, I didn't really, like, I was paying more attention to the musicality side of things during their debut era with In Bloom. But knowing who's singing what part, and admittedly, I don't know if these lyric videos that we referenced today were 100% accurate. But there's certain voices where if I didn't have lyric videos to go off, like color-coded lyric videos to go off of, I would have had no idea what direction to go for. Or like who was singing just because they sound so similar to each other. I don't usually feel that way about a group, especially a group that's this big. Like, a nine-member group is big. It's not the biggest in the world, but it's not small by any means. Which means there's going to be more options on who's who. But usually the vocals can help with me trying to figure out who's who. Because if I listen to some of their music, I hear a voice, and I know immediately, okay, okay, that's per this person. I don't have the luxury of that with ZB1. And that's really interesting. I haven't come across a group like this since... Hmm... What's a group that I really struggle to learn the members' names based off of their voices? It'll come to me one day, just not right now. And I don't want to keep y'all keep y'all waiting for too long while my brain decides to slowly marinate through that piece of information. But that is it from me today. Thank you all for listening along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. One last request from me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether it be, you know, checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness to be bright for someone else's day-to-day. -day and know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, 
even though I'm just some guy in the internet who waffles about music in his free time, you know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on every day. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.